Hi, this is Zach Mir with the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Zach's Traders Cafe for Thursday, the 1st of June. And it's a pinch and a punch for the first day of the month, but uh, more of a punch really of, uh, of late. And you can see the FTSE still below the 200-day moving average. Currently at 75.26. We want to see an end-of-day close back above that as a, a trigger for a potential move up to perhaps the 50-day moving average area around uh, 76.80. But uh, the problem is that... Uh, we still have uh, the um, market uh, struggling below the uh, support line there from October. And we've got the risk of, um, while we're below the 200-day line of a move down to the floor of that uh, falling December trend channel, currently implying that there could be a retest of March support. <clears throat> on the positive side, though, uh, we've got the RSI having bounced already on the 30 level. And if you look back historically, most of the times when uh, the, the FTSE bounces off uh, the 30 level, you actually have a rally. It's almost, uh, even if it's not one that's sustained, there tends to be a rally of uh, 50, 100, 150 points. Something like that. So we are on a mission here to see whether this market will uh, remain below the 200-day line or get back above it. On to the DAX. And uh, here you can see that uh, the market has bounced off the floor of that rising trend channel from September, and uh, that was around the 15,700 area. So that's uh, a positive tick. RSI just below the uh, 50 level now, so waiting for an end-of-day close for that above uh, the 50 level, which means that we're still on track potentially for a move to the top of the channel near to 17,000 over the next four to six weeks, probably looking at the end of July rather than the end of June now after the uh, setback we've had. But a uh, big plus there for the DAX having bounced off the 50-day line and the price channel floor. Moving on to the Dow, which... Uh, from memory, was down again yesterday. It's been a very weak market, but still holding above the 200-day moving average at 32,700, which is obviously more than the FTSE has been able to manage. Uh, you could argue that we're still within that um, rising trend channel from back in August, September. A bit of wiggle room, 100 points here and there on that. Uh, but at least the 200-day line is still there as uh, support. And while we're above that, looking for initially to get back to the area of the rising 50-day moving average at 33,300. The fact that that is still rising is quite a positive for this market. What we'd also like to see, though, is the RSI go back above uh, the neutral 50 level. It's currently only at 42. On to Bitcoin, where things were looking slightly better for the start of the week. Uh, let's see where we are now. Well, we've still not been able to get back above the 50-day moving average at 28,100. And at the moment, it looks like a bit of a failure to break that resistance line there from uh, last month, or rather from April. And we want to see that 28,100 level broken. Otherwise, we risk a test of the uh, 26,000 area, which was uh, late May support. Uh, worst case scenario is that we have to go back down to the bottom of that uh, rising trend channel from last year, this time last year, at 22,000. But hopefully... Uh, this market's still strong enough to resist that scenario. On to the stocks, and it has to be said, uh, probably one of the most difficult days in recent uh, months to find bullish-looking situations. Uh, really had to sort of scrape the barrel, but uh, we've got Clean Tech Lithium here, which has managed to find support where it was supposed to in the uh, mid 30s we broke a line of resistance there from february as well um earlier well, last week and uh, unfilled gap to the upside there through that line is a is a positive signal suggests that while we're above 40 pence we are in uh, bull or recovery mode let's say looking for a retest of april resistance around 60 pence sometime this month and uh, if you're cautious you wait for either an end of day close back above the 50 day line at uh, 47 and a half or the 200 day moving average at 49 and three quarters but uh, i think the 50 day line probably the most important thing there we haven't been above the 50 day line since the middle of march moving along to a requested stock and um uh, quite relieved that there's been a requested stock given there's so few uh, bullish situations but uh, live company in a broadening triangle from october what the missing piece of the jigsaw really is to get an end of day close back above the 200 day line at 2.8 pence to give then give us a notional target maybe by the end of this month as high as 3.7 pence upside valid while we hold above the 2.5 pence area which is basically neckline resistance on the recent bear trap recovery from below one and three quarter pence so i think we look back you can see that we haven't been above the 200 day line 
uh, since the beginning of July last year. Uh, stock which is which I haven't covered quite some time, which may be worth uh, having a look at at the moment, is uh, Net Scientific. Here we've got a rising trend channel for the channel. If I can uh, draw it correctly, is roughly around where we are now. It's probably 68, 69 pence. Top of the channel there as high as 95 pence, and we're looking for that maybe as soon as the end of next month if we can get a, a pretty quick. Uh, end of day close above the 50 day moving average currently around 72 pence so above 72 looking for 95 but obviously wait on that trigger there at the 50 day line the other thing to notice uh, to look out for is the rsi breaking above neutral 50 but the overall backdrop here decent given that we've got the rising trend channel and given the way that the 200 day moving average is rising uh, at the moment Ondo stock, which has created quite a stir, a positive stir, that is, uh, Ondo. And uh, here you can see that uh, we finally managed to break uh, the uh, 20 pence target that we were looking for, uh, or at least I was looking for, uh, over the last few weeks. And uh, next level up now, up towards a um, March 2022 resistance line projection, as high as 27 or 28 pence by the end of this month. So we're looking pretty good there, especially... Uh, while we remain above uh, the 19 pence level, which was the uh, previous high for the stock. So above 19, looking for 28. On Ondo, Ondo stock, which I haven't looked at for quite a while, uh, Paul Begg, uh, f a farmer, and uh, something I'm personally excited about because I think the AI will have a positive impact on companies like this. Here we've broken the 50-day moving average and we've got a rising 200-day line around 7.4 pence. Initial target here around nine and a half pence, which is a November resistance line projection. After that, looking for a rather greater target as high as 16 pence, which is the, uh, if I can get the chart to uh, behave, is the top of a rising trend channel from December 2021. So uh, nine and a half and then 16 on the upside, while we hold above the seven pence zone. And uh, there's a bullish divergence line there as well to signal that we could be on our way. A uh, stock which I covered, um, I think as recently as yesterday, is uh, Savannah. Here we had an unfilled gap to the upside. Yesterday, we're just breaking the high of the uh, gap day, so to speak, which would suggest that uh, this situation has legs. Six pence at the moment expected to be the minimum on the upside, which is the top of a rising trend channel, if I can get it, uh, from back in 2021, and really looking for much more than that. Uh, but let's just go for six pence first over the next week or two upside valid while we hold above the uh, four and a half or four and a quarter pence level which was uh, the april resistance it, uh, just a couple of months ago on to uh, united oil and gas uh, where i'm still waiting for the the bulls to get back in charge rising trend channel here from november good to see that the floor of the channel there at one around 1.3 pence is held uh, even though obviously it was disappointing that we came down from uh, nearly 2.2 pence. End of day close through the 200 day line at 1.5 pence. Could take us up to 2.2 pence as soon as the end of this month. Just a couple of uh, shares to go. First is uh, Westminster Group, which is virtually in the black now. I think that's probably the, r the right way of saying it. Here we've uh, gapped up off the lows. Bear trap gap reversal. Bullish divergence as well. So this looks like it is a real recovery, let's say. Uh, end of day close above the uh, November resistance line at 1.6 pence could take us up to as high as 3 pence as soon as the end of this month. So looking quite perky there on Westminster Group. Finishing off with U Group. And uh, here we've broken a line of resistance from March and the 50-day line around 580. Above 580, we're looking for the top of that broadening triangle from january as high as nine pounds by the end of next month and ideally we stay above the uh, 560 area probably should do the trick on that but uh, maybe if you're more squeamish a stop loss around 580 might be appropriate too not in alphabetical order but uh, here we've got uh, edenville where the jason brewer Factor is uh, at play, the shares up 45%. Initial target here on a technical basis up to 10 pence, which is a December resistance line projection. And then the eventual target, maybe as soon as the end of this month, up to 16 pence at uh, the uh, basically one year resistance line projection from last summer. In terms of the stop loss, we'd like to see the shares remain above the 6 pence level, which was the previous resistance last month. That's it for me today. More updates tomorrow.